That brings me to my Friday car, right? Do I have a Friday car? Yeah, this is my Thursday car. This is my Friday rider. This is when I go DJ Khaled. I don't rent here. I own that building, okay? The building behind me, I don't know if they can see that other big blue building behind me. Dude, I'm trying to buy that damn thing right now, okay? Now, I got 7,000 units today. I'm bragging to you. History is filled with more than a handful of men who rose from nothing and insignificance to a whole new level. Some tag it the grass to grace or rags to riches story. Although it's clear that in every person there's the man, the myth, and the legend, very few make it to the legendary status. Also, not everyone gets to have fame, images splattered all over the internet, or a vast amount of fortune to last generations. Whether you're getting by or actively looking to rub shoulders with the high and mighty, how they got there always makes for an interesting story. We take a deep dive into the flamboyant and controversial history of one of the biggest online gurus of all time. This is the story of Grant Cardone. There is no indication of the successes and achievements Grant Cardone currently enjoys during his birth. In fact, there wasn't a stars-aligned moment or a couple of wise men presenting gifts on the 21st of March in the year 1958. Grant Cardone was born to Curtis Louis Cardone and Conchetta Niel Cardone in the Lake Charles area of Louisiana. He didn't come alone though. He's a twin to Gary Cardone and the fourth of five siblings. Education was really important to his parents, so Grant went to Lagrange High School for his schooling and McNeese State University for graduation. He pursued and obtained a bachelor's degree in science and graduated in 1981. Much later in the year 2010, Grant would be awarded the McNeese State University Distinguished Alumnus Award. It was not always plain sailing from the beginning, but the Cardones always remained close and there was always something to eat. His father always made sure of that but he soon lost him at the age of 10 to a sudden heart attack. This left Conchetta, Grant's mum, devastated and alone to face the piling bills and the prospect of taking care of five children, three boys and two girls. What made things harder was the limited support, lack of education and work experience to help her take care of the family. These issues combined to make Grant's future bleak by the minute. However, his mother was determined and found a way to make things work. Still, Grant grew up poor and in an environment that was anything but safe and fancy. The trauma of losing his father at such an early age was followed by the death of his oldest brother a few years later. Curtis Cardone Jr. was 25 when he died, adding more emotional strain to the already struggling family. From the ages of 15 to 25, Grant had it rough. Poverty, an insecure environment, bad decisions, and peer pressure would lead him to join gangs and succumb to the throes of drugs. It was a terrible moment in his life that he remembers quite fondly as the turnaround point. Hey man, look, my life was so bad. Life was so bad, it was bad. But you know what, I made that life bad. Because I was stuck in how unfair life had been to me. I lost my dad, I lost my brother, I lost a girlfriend, I was beat up all the time, people in high school didn't like me. Cardone is happily married to Eleanor Cardone, Nee Leons, an actress and a model. They have been married since 2004 and have two daughters, Sabrina and Scarlett. Cardone is a man that takes extreme pride in his family and never shies from showing off his family. In a tweet, Grant shows off his daughters against the background of a castle and tweeted, Brought my girls to a castle, 10xing my childhood dreams. So happy to be here with my family. The man with the famous average is a failing formula mantra was far below average in everything. No thanks to drug-related issues and addiction. It is so bad that even three overdoses during a battle with addiction spanning nine years couldn't deter him from drugs. Firstly, the drug addiction started at a young age with weed, something he attributed to peer pressure. He knew the addiction would affect his life and relationships with his family, but he found it difficult putting a stop to it. He may have started with weed, but he quickly moved up the ladder, using amphetamines, barbiturates, cocaine, crack, and others. He quickly went from being a great kid everyone admired and trusted to an abhorrent loafer no one could rely on to stay clean or get anything done. That good spell where everyone trusted him lasted for just a while before he degenerated into being the black sheep of the Cardone family. Even though that was an unintentional goal, there was no stopping the habit, which seemed permanent at the time. In some interviews, Grant often stated how addiction was a massive, massive problem for him, and it was a daily affair. 
At some point, especially five years into the addiction, Grant would try and fail to get clean, but it just didn't happen. However, his mother played perhaps the biggest role in his transformation. It is so bad that one day he went to his mother's business looking terrible, with slurring words, bloodshot eyes, and everything you'd associate with a drug addict. His mum turned him out, telling him she was done, and never to come to her again. Despite all the love she had for her son, she couldn't bear to see him that way any longer. This would be one of the best things she did for Grant, and he eventually checked into a treatment center. It was his mother's tough and sincere love that saved his life and set the course for his future trajectory. Before that, there was another traumatic event that also helped him correct the direction of his life. On a certain rainy night when Cardone was walking home, he was robbed at gunpoint following a setup by his friend. Grant tried to fight off the armed robber, but he was severely beaten with a pistol and left for dead. He spent three days in the hospital and would need more than 70 stitches. Moreover, his face was so badly damaged that his mother couldn't tell it was him. That was one of the major straws that broke the camel's back. This guy said something to me and I said something to him and he sent a boy, you know, to teach me a lesson. With a gun and a... Yeah, yeah, because... Okay. You still got scars from that? Oh yeah, totally. Okay. Totally. Here, here above both of my eyes, underneath the eyes, over on the mouth and... Somehow, Grant went on to successfully undergo a treatment program to the end. The whole process was transformative and launched him into a whole new life. It wasn't an easy process, but he went all the way to rebuild his life with a drug-free body and mind. His first port of call after the treatment center was home. For Grant, all those hours he spent doing drugs had to be channeled into something great, becoming excellent at a job he hated so much. And boy, did he get that job. He doubled down to turn his life around and paid back everybody he damaged along the way. Of course, it was never going to be easy with a reputation shot to bits and close associates wary of trusting him. However, Grant built back his self-respect and self-esteem to an extent where others began to trust him again. Grant has used this story to inspire those with active addictions and families that have to deal with the nightmare of seeing their loved ones in its grip. It's something he has freely spoken about, including the terrible effects on his life, the wasted years, and how he finally overcame them. For him, recovery is possible, and a new drug-free life is achievable post-addiction. A stitch in time saves nine. But there was nothing about being on time for Grant's life. It was a struggle without any automatic flip. Sure, the potential was there, but it was evident that he'd have to struggle to pursue his dreams and attain them. That included getting a degree in accounting. But there was no job coming at the time. Further, the economy was slow, coupled with high employment rates at that time. As a result, Cardone didn't have a plethora of options before him. According to the man himself, the very thing he hated became the gateway to the rest of his life. He got a job as a car salesperson, even though he detested settling for it. Because of his accounting degree, he thought he had to do something. What spurred him on were words from his mother earlier on. She told him that the best investment you will ever make is in yourself. So he applied it to his situation. Grant dived into the work, leading and soaking in as much as he possibly could about selling, influencing people, and a great deal of literature about the automobile industry. What followed was an increase in his income to about double the figure per month. He moved from earning $3,000 to $6,000 per month after figuring out one of the most powerful tools for becoming successful, applied knowledge. Through this effort, dedication, and investment in knowledge, Cardone eventually became one of the most prominent car salesmen in the country. For Grant Cardone, getting a job deserving of his college degree was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Settling for the sales job was one of the ways out, and by the age of 29, his career kicked off with his first business, a consulting company for the automobile industry. Cardo began by offering consulting services to manufacturers and car dealers in the United States and Canada. He would advise them on ways they could change their processes to be more consumer-friendly, fast, profitable, and effective with both customers and dealers. These auto companies were paying him top dollar at the time to learn about the idea. As time went on, more people asked for consulting sessions and paid him to speak about more business ideas. These activities saw him travel around countries and would eventually make him a public speaker, giving speeches on marketing, sales, real estate, investments, branding, wealth, etc. Further, he founded Grant Cardone Enterprises in February 1989, 
with a vision to provide tools for individuals, salespeople, businesses, and executives to improve and maximize untapped opportunities. Cardone has had stints working with Toyota, Google, Sprint, Aflac, Ford, GM, and many other companies. In addition, he owns and operates seven businesses, with yearly sales reaching up to 100 million US dollars. Furthermore, he started the 10X Growth Conference in 2017, after publishing his best-selling book, The 10X Rule, in 2011. The three-day conference is one of the world's largest business and entrepreneurial gatherings. At the conference, people get to learn ways to 10X their business, income, and lives from the world's most successful entrepreneurs. Somewhere in between setting up the conference and other business moves, Grant decided to take his career up a notch by producing a TV show. He called it the Turnaround King, and around 2010, he partnered with Atlas Media Corp and National Geographic Channel to broadcast the series. For Cardone, building the billionaire mindset is a combination of many factors. But it wasn't until 2008 that he started to really think big. The recession also played a role, and he felt bad enough about not putting his family in a position to flourish. However, as he always learned, Grant picked up so much about business and the economy, things he went on to share with anyone that cared to listen. Top among them was his loving wife, Eleanor. Cardone told her that the next time a downturn in the economy happens, they were going to flourish, and they did just that during the pandemic. In 2020, he shot a TV show, and his company had one of the best years ever, buying assets more than they did years before and making more money. He turned all the dark points in his life to positivity. Rather than moping around with negative feelings trying to prevent him from reaching his full potential, Grant used honest self-criticism to motivate himself into being a better person. According to him, no one should be afraid of debt, especially if it's a good debt that could help you build a good financial future for your business. On the other side of the coin, consumer debt is terrible and could suck you into a hole. You need investments to keep going and getting better. And even with all his achievements, Grant never stopped. He's always on his next goal of buying a business portfolio so he can continuously grow his assets as a billionaire. You can put that down to his greedy mindset. For him, you're either a consumer, producer, or investor. Grant Cardone is all three because he consumes, produces, and invests in businesses. The man is big on self-improvement and goes the extra mile to get better because that's where it all starts, he says. Also, Cardone believed that he was the most important thing in his life because other people can't get better. For this reason, he urges his listeners and followers to work on their mindset and challenge themselves to flip negative concepts surrounding their lives. This means converting self-blame, debt, and greed into pockets of motivation to improve oneself. Grant believes that you have the power to change your perspective and see growth opportunities in whatever life throws at you. When you do that, no one and nothing can ever stand in your way. Oh, I ain't a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm a... Dude, everybody's a victim. Anytime you protest anything, anytime you protest anything, Anytime you resent anything, the price of something, how long something takes. See, I'm always bitching about time. Like, it's taking me too long. Let's go. Well, you know what? I'm being a victim at that moment rather than being responsible. His motivational sessions have become a commonplace on platforms like YouTube, where he has more than 2 million subscribers. Grant Cardone grew up as a Catholic, but that has since changed. He is currently a keen follower of Scientology, a set of beliefs and practices and movements many have defined as a cult. Scientology regards humans as immortal and spiritual beings, what they call Thetan, resident in a physical body. He has been asked about it in various interviews as well. In one of them, he acknowledged being brought up Catholic, but claimed that a person can read the book on Scientology and still be a Catholic, a Muslim, Mormon, or agnostic. According to him, the book is about your mind, regardless of your beliefs. Cardone was all about getting the truth for himself, so he checked out Scientology and discovered how it worked. He's one to check out new things and try to understand them rather than dismiss them with a wave of the hand. Besides, Cardone thinks history shows that when masses of people make a decision one way or the other regarding any topic, most of the time the masses are wrong. That's why for him Scientology and Dianetics are great things. He says, I know it helps people, and it has made my life incredibly rich in every way, so no one should feel threatened by it just because it is new. Further, he was quoted to say that Dianetics solves problems and puts man in a position to be in control of his or her life. 
People are woken up so they can discover what is true for them. It's something so many wildly successful business people use in their businesses to create success. Grant has always credited Scientology for the values that keep him going, such as in this interview. It, it, it suggests, uh, you know, flourish and prosper. That's the solution. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, be ethical, do the right thing, uh, flourish and prosper. You know, make decisions based on what's the greatest good for the greatest number of people. For someone with such a history of overcoming obstacles and turning his life around, it was only a matter of time before Grant Cardone became a distinguished author. It started at the turn of the millennium with the book Control Without Confrontation, Automotive Sales Program. He followed that up with other sales programs and books such as Maximizing Every Opportunity, Automotive Sales Program in 2005, and Selling, The Secret to Success in 2008. Others include Sell to Survive also in 2008 and If You're Not First, You're Last in 2010. 2011 birthed the book titled The 10X Rule, The Only Difference Between Success and Failure. The book quickly became a bestseller and has a Spanish edition, quotes, and several summary versions. Cardone's other successful book is The Millionaire Booklet, How to Get Super Rich, published in 2016. The book is widely acclaimed and has three translated editions, Hmong, Hebrew, and Norwegian. Cardone would later publish other books such as Sell or Be Sold, How to Get Your Way in Business and in Life, 2011, Closer Survival Guide, 2011, and Secrets of Selling in 2014. He also released Obsessed, How to Demand Business Success and Get It in 2014. Since then, he has maintained a steady streak of interesting motivational and business books including How to Create Wealth Investing in Real Estate 2018 and Dominate Your Market 2019. Some of his latest books are If You're Not First, You're Last 2021 and Be Obsessed or Be Average in 2021. Cardone has always had an interest in television and knowing the kind of person he was, he would get in and dominate. To that end, he made his television debut in 2011 via his reality show Turnaround King where he brings failing businessmen back on track and aired it on National Geographic. Soon, many other shows, full appearances, and cameos followed, such as The Ed Milet Show in 2017, The American Dream in 2017, Da Man in 2020, London Real in 2020, and Cove Aid Festival Live in 2020. In 2021, Cardone appeared in season two of the reality TV show Undercover Billionaire, broadcast on the Discovery Channel. The series begins with him going undercover to a city, accompanied by Monique Edled Mosley and Elaine Colotti. There, they attempt to start a business with a valuation of $1 million in 90 days. In addition, Cardone owns Grant Cardone TV. He uses the channel to run more than 18 shows for entrepreneurs who want to boost their revenue, crack big deals, grow their brands, and build a lasting legacy of wealth. Like the proverbial one-man band, Cardone built a real estate empire all by himself through his investment vehicle, Cardone Capital. Over time, Cardone Capital has been involved in billions of dollars worth of real estate transactions, and today the company owns around $2.7 billion worth of apartment buildings across the United States. Even though that figure has not been independently confirmed, what Cardone has managed to accomplish in real estate it's nothing short of remarkable, and he didn't just start today. His journey into real estate is more than a flash in the pan. He began showing interest at a young age, and at the age of 29, things took an upward turn when he bought a single-family home in Houston that he rented out. He would later sell the property after the tenants left. Another five years went, and he acquired a 38-unit complex in San Diego for $1.9 million, using a down payment of just $350,000. He continued building his portfolio of complexes and apartments. By 2012, Cardone Capital had 1,016 apartments under its belt for a grand total of $58 million. A bit more personally, in January, Grant paid $40 million for a 9,500-square-foot home in Malibu, California. The sprawling property is located on Carbon Beach. Some years before purchasing it, the property was listed for $50 million. Also, Carbon Beach plays host to some illustrious neighbors, like billionaire Oracle founder Larry Ellison and movie mogul Jerry Katzenberg. Cardone's former home in Los Angeles was bought by musician Lionel Richie for around $18 million. 
who was also rumored to be the buyer of Tommy Hilfiger's Florida mansion for $28 million. A man like Grant Cardone has so many cards under their sleeves when it comes to investments and earnings per year. Currently, he has a net worth estimated to be around $2.6 billion. But before that, it was reported that his net worth was estimated at around $300 million. However, during one of his appearances on the show, Undercover Billionaire, he mentioned that his net worth is around the $2.6 billion mark. That's enough to whistle about, considering only a few percent of people have worth that figure. He was not happy when he discovered that a columnist site claimed he was worth $600 million. Grant Cardone net worth, celebrity net worth says I have a net worth of $600 million. There's a lot of misinformation in here. The net worth also is wrong, by the way. Uh, I'm the only one that actually knows what my net worth is, and maybe I'll reveal it today on the show. Further, Cardone earns up to $40 million per year from his e-commerce ventures alone. But the bulk of his net worth comes from his real estate empire, boasting a collection of properties estimated at approximately $1.4 billion. Besides, he runs a real estate-related investment channel, which is one of the most followed and liked channels on the platform. The channel contributes several million of his earnings per year. Other social media platforms where you're likely to find Grant Cardone's tips, videos, and more include Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, thus creating a wide-reaching brand and network. In the same way, hosting the 10x conference adds to his credibility as a business and investment expert earning top dollar. These are some activities that add to his net worth. However, there are likely to be others free from public scrutiny. Let's not forget that he's also a best-selling author of some of the most popular books out there. Cordone has done well to stay out of negative and shadowy spotlights, unlike many of his peers. However, some issues have popped up over the years. One of them happened in 2021 when Louis Pino, a Los Angeles-based entrepreneur, filed a lawsuit against Grant Cardone, alleging that he was misled to invest in Cardone Capital. Also, the lawsuit alleged that Cardone's company turned a blind eye to warnings from a Securities and Exchange Commission enforcement lawyer to remove misleading claims about monthly distribution investors receiving up to 15% annual return on their investment. It wasn't a successful lawsuit. The U.S. District Judge John F. Walter dismissed the action and concluded that Pino failed to adequately allege that Cardone made material misstatements and omissions about a 15% annual rate of return on any investments. Before the incident above, Cardone released a video in 2020 saying he was preparing to file for bankruptcy. He also said he'd lost everything he had and built, including the jet, cars, the condo, the apartment complexes, the watch, and some of his employees. Even his wife wasn't spared, and he alleged that they were all gone. He made jokes about prison and going away for a long time. However, the whole stunt turned out to be a marketing ploy to draw attention. It was all a joke, something he'd done a couple of times before, with him saying he did all of that in an attempt to break into the news cycle. Coming from a background where he watched his mother struggle to put food on the table, he quickly developed the belief that you give back what you get. To that end, he founded the Grant Cardone Foundation, a nonprofit that partners with community organizations, municipal agencies, corporations, and other nonprofits to provide mentoring and financial literacy education to kids in need, particularly those lacking father figures in their lives. The thought behind creating the foundation was losing his father at the young age of 10 which affected his emotions, grades, and other aspects of his life. Further, Cardone is a big fan of entrepreneurs Warren Buffett and Mark Cuban, and author Napoleon Hill. He considers them his mentors. Over the years, he admits to having many mentors, including those he only met via their books and other literature. His dad was someone he looked up to from a young age. But unfortunately, fate had other plans for him. Among other things, he has appeared on several news stations as a commentator, such as Fox News, Fox Business, CNBC, and MSNBC. In addition, he has written articles for publications like Forbes, Business Insider, and Huffington Post. It's never easy to judge a man, especially when what he can achieve has greatly manifested. However, this documentary has demystified the man and the legend of Grant Cardone to a large extent. Starting from a tough background and all those years spent battling drug addiction would have put many people down and out. Not him, though. He worked his socks off to get where he is now, and he's not going to rest on his successes. Many business deals and children that take after him suggest that the world has some more to learn from the Cardone brand. Whether that's through books, TV shows, posts, or actual news content, time will tell.
If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and for more videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Thank you for watching.